would always say it. And then, Professor, we got the video. Oh, very exciting video. There was an ultrasound transducer on the top of the mouse head. We're back! Yay! Yay! Now for part two, we have prepared this cute capsule machine. And each capsule contains one question for our researchers. Oh, so many questions! So wow. many questions! Now, I will read out a question, and then whoever wants to answer raises their hand. Okay, and today is Bali Bali. Question number one. Do you have any tips on how to build your expertise as a researcher in Korea? One, two, three. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> You two are fast. I think it's a tie. Wow, fast. You're faster than me. <laughs> I'll go first. <laughs> okay, let's hear from you both. I would always say ask questions. Don't be afraid to not know everything. Nobody knows anything. And second, uh, me personally, GIS offers a lot of good like support programs and uh, language and cultural exchange programs. So. It was very helpful for me, so also I would recommend to try to join these programs, like have a, a Korean or international body program to get to know more about the uh, environment you're living in, the country, the culture, and always ask questions. Okay, always ask questions. That's good advice. What's your advice? Actually, I'm still on my way to get some tips or know-how as a researcher. And actually, in the graduate, graduate school, for the master or PhD students, they have their own advisor is the leading professor like that, the research direction like that. So actually, I'm really novice researcher so far, and I always try to ask some advice from a professor, and I, I think it's really lucky that I, uh, what can I say, I can get my advisor, Professor Kim as my advisor. For example, in recently, uh, actually I have some data after the experiment, and actually I just thought that, oh, it is quite really good but it has quite good value and it's quite good data. Okay, then I will report to my professor. Okay, yeah, <laughs> like that. But when after meeting in the meeting, the professor emphasized me that a good researcher has to should never be just satisfied just its own data because we have to focus on the data and we have to analyze or interpret with the multiple angles that why it comes come from or what can we use it as for other applications like that. But actually, before professor advice, I just satisfied. So <laughs> at first you were happy, then you talked to him, and then you were <laughs> like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> at that time, I was sad. <laughs> but, but, but I was not sad about professor advice because I, why I didn't think about it like that. So I think that was a case that I can step up with the, the further researcher. So, so what I want to say is that oh, as a researcher, as a graduate student, I, we have to use use a professor as an advisor. Yeah, so having a great professor, I think, can be so useful because he does have a lot more experience, yeah, right. so he can learn a lot if you ask a lot of questions. That's, that's why I am here. Yeah, that's what he's here for, right? That's right. To make you feel like you're not oh. enough. <laughs> Next question. All right, let's see what we got this time. Question number two. What has been the most memorable experience in your professional career? I think this is a really interesting question that everyone should answer, actually. So let's do this the Korean way. Let's go by age. Starting from youngest? With the... From oldest? Oldest, <laughs> Professor oh. Kim. Okay. Sure. So, I've been using the light, as I said, for the diagnosis of the disease, mostly. But about like eight or uh, seven years ago, I started to use the ultrasound. And then I actually had no experience of using ultrasound for the research. However, one of my lab members at the time, he was kind of telling me that, oh, professor, I want to do the ultrasound research. Oh, really? Uh, we have nothing in our lab to do the ultrasound research. And he said, okay, if you 
can you know purchase this and this and this then we can do it so we basically provide all the environments to him and then he was actually able to manage those and then set up the system and then uh, he was one day uh, bring up the video to me and then professor we got the video okay what kind of video oh very exciting video and then when I watched the video, the video was showing that there was an ultrasound transducer on the top of the mouse head. And then when he turned on the ultrasound, and then the mouse, the hind leg was kind of shivering. Wow, what's happening? And then that's because of the ultrasound was uh, transmitting through the, the motor cortex of the mouse brain. And that actually stimulates that part of the brain, which causes the movement of the leg. Mm -hmm. So which means that that is working. So it's kind of proof of concept and proof of principle that ultrasound can stimulate the, you know, your brain and also so that it affects the body. So that was uh, so far my most memorable uh, moment uh, in my career that I never actually used ultrasound, but with uh, the enthusiasm from our lab member and then he set up the system and then he showed that very exciting kind of research. So that's how actually uh, lead our lab to be in the uh, ultrasound brain stimulation field. Wow. So that was the most exciting moment wow. for me. <laughs> okay, in 90, 91, <laughs> 92, 93, 94. Oh. Okay, here we go. Okay. Also another uh, big change I had because after my master's, I took Korean classes and you know Korean language comes with the culture so you cannot learn the language without the culture otherwise you will sound so rude when you speak because the levels of respect and everything is very different. After learning the language I came to GIST to make my PhD life easier but everybody spoke English. <laughs> <laughs> So I felt like, okay, so I wasted a year of my life <laughs> learning a language and memorizing sentences that I never got to use. So it was interesting though, but I can say there was a big difference in the same country from my previous university and my current university. Now you can go and order your bibimbap in perfect Korean. <laughs> of course, it made my life outside the lab much easier. That's great. Okay. All right, next question. In a typical research environment, how do you make multinational teams work? One, two, three. <laughs> okay, perfect. In Korean words, there is uh, the term as a gajok, means that those members who are actually sharing a meal together. Why that word is so important? Siku who are actually eating meal together, they have to get together to share the delicious food. And then when they are sharing the food and eating the food, they talk to each other. It is very um, important time that they know about, you know, what other members had some kind of experience today, what happened for the other member, what kind of worries they have. So the best tip is actually having uh, some more chance that our multinational team members can actually share some meal. They have a more chance to talk to each other. Uh, team is like same as Shiku. So to work on the same project, we have to actually share their ideas, their some critical viewpoint too. Mm -hmm. So I, my goal is like making all our members to become a one whole big family then I think that our project could be going very well. Oh, that's a really beautiful way to unite the team members. Mm -hmm. Now, to wrap things up, I'd love to ask you one final question. What are your plans for the future? Maybe one day become a professor, have my own lab and my own students, my family, my friends, my home. I want to give back to my country, my home, my people, what I learned here in Korea, and mm -hmm. I want to share. Graduation is my most important plan. <laughs> so actually, I have to make deeper in the specific topics when if I want to be a researcher as a post PhD. So 
I try to wrap up my whole uh, my top research topics with any other no, no problems and and then be a, a postdoctoral fellowship as a researcher like that after graduation. First plan is I have to graduate because in PhD there is a limited time and you have a lot of things to learn and you in such a limited amount, it also makes you um, creative, how to learn more things in depth and how to collaborate and how to um, establish your research network. That's the, I think, the um, skill that you will develop under this uh, limited lifespan of this PhD, of this degree. And after graduation, I plan to work more about the um, and focus more about the biomedical optics. Right now I'm working on the Alzheimer's. Maybe in future I want to use the photodynamic therapy for the tumors or maybe for the brain tumors, which are very deep in the brain and trying to figure out how, what are the ways that we can eliminate tumor with minimal um, damage to the uh, healthy tissues. So after that, I would like to work with the scientists and researchers who are well established in that field so that I can learn more about it and have more expertise in my field. And I think the future is going to be much more innovative that we perceive or inspired. As I mentioned, the biomedical engineering is the ultimate goal is to give us some benefit for the you know, whole society mm -hmm. in terms of the health. So that's why I started a company about four years ago. Mm -hmm. So my plan is to make my company to be more getting better and better and having more investment and then making more money and then so that later uh, having uh, some public hospital mm -hmm. under my name <laughs> so that you know you're still working on that dream you had <laughs> I still have started. that dream I still have that dream as we've learned today the Teddy research team is at the forefront of a groundbreaking field using cutting-edge technology to diagnose and treat people in ways that used to be impossible they're not just working with technology, they're literally creating the energy of life through engineering. It's a fascinating area of research and we're lucky that we got the chance to dive into it today. A huge thank you to our brilliant researchers. Thank you for sharing your insights today, really. Great job, guys. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Or. Thank you yeah. so much.